Greetings, eco-friendly viewers, and welcome to today's Planet Earth, our loving home, featuring leading climate scientist Dr. James Hansen. Dr. Hansen is the director of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, or GISS, at Columbia University, where he is leading the GISS in research on the planet's atmosphere and global climate change. Dr. Hansen, like many of the more seasoned researchers of climate science, is increasingly concerned at what the studies are showing. These studies are based on three things, the Earth's history, satellite data, and computer models. The GISS has developed computer models to simulate the Earth's climate from 1880 through the present day. Dr. Hansen is quick to remind people that computer models are a useful tool, but cannot compare with the compelling truth told by the Earth's past events. This distinguished American scientist, leader and hero has received more than 20 awards starting in 1977 with the Goddard Special Achievement Award. On February 16, 2008, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, or AAAS, honored him for his exemplary actions in helping foster scientific freedom and responsibility. Dr. James Hansen has received the Shining World Hero Award from Supreme Master Ching Hai. For all his contributions and courage, the award was presented to him in recognition of boldly speaking the truth, generating worldwide awareness of the state of our planet, and advocating change to save our wondrous planet. For many years, Dr. Hansen has sounded the alarm on the worldwide threat of global warming. Some of the tipping points to take note in relation to climate change include the melting of the Arctic ice sheets, extreme weather catastrophes, and rising sea levels. Climate variability has also had an impact on agriculture by causing severe drought in some regions and extreme floods in others. The Talberg Forum in Sweden is an annual event organized by the Talberg Foundation. Recognizing the global interdependence of our modern society, the event offers leaders of the world a chance to exchange ideas and search for answers to the world's challenges in the atmosphere of an open exchange. At the 2008 Talberg Forum, Supreme Master Television's correspondent interviewed Dr. Hansen on the seriousness of climate change. Welcome uh, to Supreme Master Television, Dr. James Hanson. It's our great honor to meet you in person. My pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be here. And uh, can you comment a little what's the situation now? It's, it's hard for people to realize this because you don't notice much happening. The global warming is about one degree Celsius. Wit and weather variations are much larger than that from one day to another. So you don't notice that there's a crisis, but in fact, we are at a crisis point now because we are very close to passing tipping points in the climate system that would have very undesirable consequences. In fact, we've actually passed one tipping point, and that's the Arctic Ocean. We've already reached a point where we're going to lose all of the ice in the Arctic Ocean. Last summer, in 2007, about half of the ice in the Arctic melted. The problem is that there are then positive feedbacks. A tipping point occurs when there are amplifying feedbacks that can come into play and cause large change to occur very rapidly. And in the case of the Arctic, the way it works is as ice melts, that exposes darker ocean, which absorbs more sunlight, that causes more ice to melt. And now, because the planet is out of energy balance, there's more 
energy coming in from sunlight than there is heat radiation going out. And the reason for that is the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane and other gases that we've added to the atmosphere traps the heat radiation. So because of this energy imbalance, we know that the rest of that Arctic sea ice is going to melt, probably within five to ten years, maybe a little bit longer. But in any case, we've passed that tipping point. Well, that is a reversible tipping point. If we were to reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere so that the energy balance became zero or slightly negative, then the planet would cool off and the ice would come back. But what we're concerned about is bigger tipping points, ones which are not reversible on any time scale that's of interest to humans. For example, the ice sheets on West Antarctica and Greenland. If those begin to disintegrate and slide into the ocean, then that's irreversible on time scale less than tens of thousands of years. It takes a long time for an ice sheet to build up from snowfall. And the consequence of that, a sea level rise of several meters, would obviously be disastrous. But another tipping point, which is also irreversible, is the extermination of species. We're already putting pressure on species because temperature lines are moving moving toward the pole at a rate of about 50 or 60 kilometers per decade. And the temperature lines are moving upward in the atmosphere. So those species that are on mountains, you know, have to move to higher levels to stay within their climatic zone or to higher latitudes. And just for some degree of movement, that's not a problem. But as it happens faster and faster, we, we can cause many species to go extinct. And then the tipping point is when so many go extinct, they depend upon each other, you can cause ecosystems to collapse. And then you lose many species. And obviously, we don't want that to happen. That's happened in the Earth's history several times. There have been very large global warming, five or six degrees Celsius. More than half the species on the planet went extinct and new ones came into being, but took hundreds of thousands of years. And obviously, that's a time scale we can't even think about. So we want to avoid those tipping points. When planet Earth, our loving home returns, Dr. James Hansen will answer the questions many concerned citizens are asking. Have we passed the point of no return? Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Hi, I'm Charlize Theron with People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Almost all the puppies for sale at your local mall were churned out by breeding facilities called puppy mills. Constant confinement drives the dogs mad. They are impregnated continually until they can no longer produce a litter. If you choose a dog from the mall, a dog you could have saved from the pound will die. To find out what else you can do to help, please contact PETA. Thank you. Welcome back to Planet Earth, our loving home, here on Supreme Master Television. Leading climatologist Dr. James Hansen provides his expertise on today's show regarding the Arctic ice melting and expresses his concern about tipping points. other point of no return? The point of no return is when you get to a place where the dynamics of the system takes over and then you can't do anything about it. It's too late. So if the ice sheet starts to slide down the slope toward the ocean, then it's too late. You, you can reduce the greenhouse gases, but it's not going to stop that ice sheet. We don't want to get to a point of no return. I don't think we are there yet, 
but in the case of the ice sheets, we, you know, we may be getting close because if we go back to 1990, then Greenland was approximately in mass balance. We would have the same amount. It would get heavier during the winter as snowfall piled up, and then it, the edges would melt in the summer, and it was approximately in balance. But it started to lose more uh, mass in the summer than it gains in the winter. And last year, in 2007, it lost at least 250 cubic kilometers of ice during the year. That sounds like a lot, but it's less than a millimeter of sea level. But it's, you know, altogether the sea level is going up three and a half centimeters per decade. It's, it's affecting some island nations. Uh, but the danger is that it could go up to a much higher rate because we know that in the Earth's history there have been times when sea level has gone up very fast and we really don't want to pass that point of no return. So where are we now? Uh, what can we do now? In fact, there, there are practical solutions. Really, I think it's important to point out that these solutions actually have many desirable characteristics. It's actually a brighter future beyond fossil fuels. The basic problem is burning of fossil fuels. We cannot burn all of the fossil fuels, all of the coal in the ground. It, coal is the biggest contributor to this. If we burn all of that, put it in the atmosphere, the Earth would be headed toward the ice-free state where it was when that carbon was in the atmosphere before. We can't let that happen. We're going to have to move to energy sources beyond fossil fuels. And that actually has many advantages. So for example, I think that we need to have, within the United States and within Europe and within China, we need to set up um, low-loss electric grids, which allow the energy from uh, renewable energy such as solar power, wind power, to be transmitted long distances without losing the energy. The current electric grids, alternating current grids, lose their energy pretty fast. So you can't transmit it very long distances. But there are, is technology, a direct current high voltage grid, that could um, transmit energy long distances and allow renewable energies to take over on the long run. And that well, has many advantages. First of all, cleaner atmosphere and ocean uh, reduce the air pollution. But, uh, and it reduces the need for importing energy from places where you, you may be not confident of uh, getting the energy on long time scale. And it preserves the planet. It preserves creation. So there are many positive things about solving the problem, and we could do that, but it does take um, leadership. Does the uh, government, most of them, doing something, or...? The governments, they talk about reducing emissions by X percent. The truth is, we're going to have to reduce carbon emissions by approximately 100 percent, because the carbon dioxide that we put in the atmosphere will stay there for much of it for more than a thousand years. So we just simply cannot burn all these fossil fuels and put the CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, and they, governments think they can make small changes and maybe that'll be good enough, but it won't. It's become very clear that we're going to have to have dramatic changes. So the policymaker has to make decision quick now. Yeah, I th yeah, we're really running out of time. In fact, I think this next year or two years are the critical time period, with the need for an international agreement to follow the Kyoto Protocol. This is the time that we have to make major um, direction-changing decisions. Join us here on planet Earth, our loving home, next Wednesday for part two 
of Supreme Master Television's exclusive interview with Dr. James Hansen. Up next, stay tuned for enlightening entertainment right after Noteworthy News. Have a blessed life in balance with nature and all beings.